Are you trying to figure out how to do picture-in-picture in, picture in DaVinci Resolve? Well, you're in luck. I think we can work that out today. Picture-in-picture picture is one of those things, especially when you're on a YouTube channel, that's vital to learn how to do, regardless of which video editor you're using. So let's get going straight away. I've just got these clips again from Pexels.com. I'm going to drag in a picture of a keyboard. You can see that the audio is there. So let me just redo that with the Option or Alt button pressed. And I'm just going to grab two little clips like this. And they're very simple person typing on a keyboard and then it follows up with a close-up of the keyboard. What I'll do is I'll just very quickly edit those clips so that they're only showing the typing. And if at this moment you don't quite know what I'm doing, go and watch videos one and two which will give you the basics of DaVinci Resolve and I think they'll really help you out. There should be a link on the screen as I'm talking right now. So that's my clip right there. I'm just going to edit it so it looks a little bit nicer. And there we have our basic clip. Nothing special, nothing really going on. Just gives us something to look at when we put the picture in picture in place. Now, I've got a picture of somebody talking here or somebody at least holding a sign. This isn't me, of course. This is just fake me. And what I'll do is I'll very carefully put it on a track which is now just above our original track. I'll resize the video track so we can see both. And this would be the person talking over the clip that's underneath. Now what we'll do is we'll just shorten this picture-in-picture -picture overlay here like this. It doesn't really matter how long or how short it is. The first problem that we're going to encounter is of course if we've put a picture on top of a picture, we've got picture on picture and not picture in picture because of course we want the upper video track to be smaller. So let's do that. Let's make sure it's clicked. Go over to the bottom left here and click on transform. Now it's a really simple case of just resizing that until it's the suitable size and putting it in the position you want it to be. And now when we rewind, you'll see that the picture in picture comes in at the top exactly where we want it to be. So that's about as basic as it gets. We just get a video track, we put it on top of our original video track, we use the transform tool to make it smaller and then just with our mouse, we position it on the screen where we want it to be. And it really couldn't be more simple than that. But what if we had some special things that we wanted to do with picture in picture? So let's go through a few of those. I'm going to close the media pool for now and open up the inspector window because we're going to be using this throughout this video now. So here's the picture in picture kind of sitting where it was when we started out like that and it comes up. So let's just say a scenario where you now need to move this picture-in-picture picture from the right-hand side of the screen all the way over to the left-hand side of the screen. Well, we can do that in two ways. Both have their place. So let's say, for example, as the video flicks to the close-up there, and let's say that our picture-in-picture picture is now getting the way of something. Let's say you're doing a product review or you're showing something on the screen. Well, let's just flip that from this position here to the left position. And the way we're going to do that is I love using my arrow keys on my keyboard because it gives me great control over which frame I'm on. So we'll get our playhead to the cut and we'll make sure that the picture on picture track is actually selected over here. Using my keyboard, I'm going to just rewind one frame like that, making sure that this is clicked here. I'm now going to click on the position X and Y and make sure that there's a keyframe there. So I've recorded that keyframe. So if I now rewind it, you can see now our picture hasn't moved and if we forward to the keyframe, that's at that frame there. Our very next frame, which is the cut of the keyboard, I'm now going to move our picture and picture to the other side of the screen. I find it's a lot easier if you just use your mouse inside the position value there like that and move it to where you think it should be. There we have our red line and that tells you that there's an animation playing now. If we just rewind it and play this, you'll see that it flips immediately from one to another. And that's a really simple way of doing a flip-flop animation or just a one-frame animation from one side of the screen to the other. You could, if you wanted to, also treat that like an animation. So if I undo that last step, we've still got our keyframe over here. And what we can do is let it play for just a little while like this. I think that was too many frames there 
And then again, we can put in a keyframe there. Now you can see that we've got an animation with steps. That means that this animation is going to play not as a flip-flop, but it's actually going to move the picture and picture across the screen. And you'll see that going. And in some cases, that might look better than just a flip-flop or a, a switch from left to right. So in that way, you have complete control of your picture in picture, where it is on the screen and where it goes on the screen. Let's do something a little bit cooler. I'm just going to undo those last step that I did there. So we've still got the animation over there. And I'm not worried about animating it anymore. What if we wanted two picture in pictures? That might be a case. Well, in that case, let's go and grab this video of this fellow sitting at a table. Again, I'm going to put it in its own track. And let's just cut that so it's the same size. It doesn't have to be, but just for the sake of this video, I'm going to make it exactly the same size. And again, transform is already selected. So let's just make that a little bit smaller. If we wanted to, we could do a, a kind of a comparison with this video over here, just to make it a bit more uniform. So that it was roughly the same size. I think I'll be happy about there. That's it. And put it on the left hand side. So there's not really a limit to how many picture and pictures you can have at one time, I suppose. As soon as your CPU starts getting hot and your fans start going on, you might hit your limit there. But anyway, let's play. And there we go. We've got two picture and pictures on the screen at the same time. And again, once you start to get yourself organized, you can animate them so that they move independently of each other. They can crisscross each other. So really, your imagination's the limit here. So that's a really simple way of getting a picture in picture up on the screen and controlling where it is and when it's there. Now what I want to deal with is a second style of picture in picture. So I'm just going to delete this track over here. Now, because I messed around so much with the keyframes of this presenter here, I'm going to end up undoing stuff that I don't want to do. So what I'll do is just click on that clip, delete this person and just drag that original clip back in. Now, this kind of picture in picture is what I really like seeing on YouTube videos. So what I'm going to do now is just take out original clips that we were showing of the keyboard and move them further into the timeline and now have our presenter as the main focus of the video. So as this video plays, this person will be talking to the audience and at a certain moment, we're going to zoom the presenter out, revealing the video underneath. And I think this looks really cool when it's done right. So let's see the steps that we're going to have to take. So here's our presenter talking and at the moment that the keyboard starts underneath, which of course we can't see, what we're going to do is do a zoom out effect on the presenter. And to do that, we're going to have to take a zoom keyframe and a position keyframe here. We'll play roughly about a second. About there, it's just slightly less than a second. So I'll just forward it slightly more like that. And we'll put in another keyframe set like this. We're going to, with our mouse, drag the zoom down. I think that's about right. And just now using our mouse for the X and the Y, we will position our presenter as now a picture in picture. And what that effect will be is as it plays, you'll see that the presenter zooms out and you see the thing underneath which the presenter's talking about. I think this looks absolutely brilliant when it's done right, like that. Of course, you can control the speed of the zoom. If you want the zoom to be fast, you can just with your arrow buttons, click like 10 frames in and you'll get a half a second or just slightly faster than half a second zoom. That's really under your control. And now if at any time you want to zoom the presenter back in, again, that's really easy because what we're going to do is make sure we take a keyframe and a keyframe in the position that the presenter's in, press play, pause it. And then of course, to reset, we simply put a zoom factor of one and an X and Y position of zero and zero like this and your picture will now be reset to its original place. So in all, this picture in picture, or as I like to call it, picture in picture reveal, looks like this. So we've got the zoom out, presenter carries on talking, you see something underneath, and then the presenter will zoom himself back in, giving you focus on what they're saying. And I think this looks really, really professional. So there we have it. We've got picture in picture done really simply. We've done picture in picture with a flip flop animation, picture in picture with a smooth animation, We've done multiple picture-in-pictures, 
and we've done a picture-in-picture -picture reveal where something underneath the presenter is shown. And I think with a bit of experimentation and a bit of practice, you can get some picture-in-pictures in your own videos that look absolutely fantastic. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. As always, I recommend you leaving a comment below. I appreciate all suggestions. I appreciate all questions. And until the next time, happy editing. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Think about clicking that like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up, and maybe think about hitting the bell notifications if you want to be notified every time a new video comes up.